In the last video, we did a, a quick walkthrough of this program, which will flash three LEDs. So basically, if I show you here, we push the button and it will sequence through those lights. And that's really great when it works, but what happens when it doesn't work? So first of all, we'll just show you how the program was uploaded. So there's a few things that we can do. We can hit play, which will just run it into the chip. So it's basically downloading into the programmer and into the chip at the moment. And when I run in this mode, I can physically disconnect from my programmer and it will still work. So I reconnect my programmer. But what happens when it doesn't work? You basically need a method of stepping through the program because you have no idea when it's free running where it's actually broken. So to do that, we've got something called debugging. So debugging is accessed from this little icon here or from the debug menu. So we can go debug main project. So when we run, uh, click this, it'll take a little bit longer to load the program into the chip, but the computer physically stays connected to the chip and it's actually checking and feeding back each line of code so we can see what's going on. So you can see again, at the moment it looks to be exactly the same, but if on the screen we click in the number row, you'll see it will turn red and that's called a breakpoint. If we now click the button, it has stopped at the line directly after the breakpoint. And what that allows us to do is actually step through one line at a time. So we can use either the step into or the step over or the run to cursor to test individual parts of this. So I'm initially going to use step over and watch what happens on the LEDs as we go. So it pauses, it goes to the next line, it increments it and we can see the LEDs incrementing. We jump over the delay, we again go to the next and increment. So you can see that I can step through and see exactly what's happening here. Now the difference between step over and step into is at the moment I have this delay and I know that delay has a lot of clicks, several thousand clicks to go through it in fact. So if I was to click into the step into, into delay, you'd see it's actually now jumped into the delay function and it will step through here and you'll see that we'll be stuck in this for ages. It'll basically just keep on looping in this loop until it's counted from 255 to zero and it takes forever. So it's often better to use the step over depending on whether you need to see what's happening in a function or if it's your confidence outside the function. But if you do happen to get stuck in a function like this, there's a two things you can do. One is if you've got your breakpoint where you wanted it, you can just hit the play again and it will then stop back at the initial breakpoint. And we can again step through one line at a time. The other option, if I happen to get stuck in the other function, so I'm just going to let it run. Currently it's stuck in here because it's waiting for me to press a button. In fact, it's it's in this part here that it's looping through and, and, and waiting. So if I want to see what's happening there, I can put my breakpoint there and straight away I can see it stops. But failing doing that method, I'll just replay it. I just want to see where it currently is. So I'm looking up here, I'm expecting it to drop through here, but it's not. I can just hit pause and it will show me where it is. So I can quickly say, ah, I'm stuck in this routine here and it's waiting for me to push the button. So if I now push the button and hold it down for debugging, you'll see it then jumps back up in, into my main loop. Okay, so we're back in the delay loop. Another way of getting back to where you want is you can put the cursor at the next point. So you may want to jump a whole heap of code. I may want it to just go straight to this line here. So I can click on run to cursor 
or set PC, which is program counter, that's the current memory location it's executing, at cursor. So I'm going to go for that one. So straight away, my next line of code is here. And again, I can step through. So I might find that I need to repeat test something over and over again to see what's going on. So I can keep on putting it back here and analyze things as they're happening. So the other one, the run to cursor. So you may want, instead of avoiding a heap of code, make it run until it um, gets into a piece of code. So I want it to run until it gets to this point here. So I can just click the run to cursor and it will stop at the cursor. So I know it's run everything in this loop already and I can then go and check values and see what has happened. So I've now added a intentional bug to this code just to illustrate um, an, another way that we can work through debugging. So again, I've got code that will compile perfectly. I recommend always using clean build for these smaller programs because it'll ensure every part of the program gets compiled, whereas the normal build only compiles the things you've changed. So sometimes that can catch you out. So just use this one until you start to get into more complex programs. So I've run that program and if I hit my button, nothing's happening. And if I look at my debugging, I will run in debug mode. Again, this takes longer to load in debug mode, so it's always better to use play if you're just doing a quick test rather than debugging. All right, so we can step through now. I'm actually using F7 on the keyboard, which is the same as this button here. And I can see, actually I'll step over instead, so F8. I can see as I'm going through that I'm doing all of the things I want, but the lights are not updating. So what's happened here? So I can go through and I've got to think a little bit logically here. So my program's gone through the start, it's initialized, it's returned, it's broken into the loop. It, it's done everything it needs to, and I can't see my, my issue. So what I can do is I'll look at the code right from when we first boot the processor. So I'll put a breakpoint at start. And I'll do a restart here, which will force the program to re-enter from the very beginning. So you see it's come into the beginning where it's done all of the initial configuration of the chip and it's saying go to start. So if I now step into that, We'll see next is call in it. Now we use, need to use step into because step over will actually jump straight over that and go to here. So we'll step into and I call my in it and I've loaded up the twist port to set the um, inputs and outputs. And what I can actually do after I've done that step is if I just hover my mouse I can see the physical values inside the port. And what I'm noticing there, whoops, is the last, or well, the first, the lowest bits are ones, which means input, and I wanted them to be output. Now, I've intentionally done this by changing this line. However, it is quite common when you're doing things with WREG that you don't realize that another piece of code has changed the value in WREG before you read it. So it's really good to watch what's happening and be able to see that's not what I expected in that location. And then we can change that. We have to stop and rerun the program. All right. And now if I do that same step through and I look at my Tris C, You can see that I have zeros where I was expecting them. And my program should now work. So we can see the LEDs are switching. And we can hit the button and it goes back and repeats. So we saw how we can pause and hover and look at a specific part of the program to see what data is in there. 
but there are instances where you may actually want to watch more than one thing at the same time. So to do that, we can go into Windows uh, debugging and bring up the variables windows. So at the moment down here, we've got the, the variables. I'll just bring it up a bit bigger with nothing in it. So there's a couple of ways we can add things here. So where I've got something like a SFR, I can right click on it and go new watch. It'll come up and ask which one do I want or I can select from a list. And it's put port C in here for me. But I may also want to watch what's in my W reg. So I can either search my list and find W reg or I can just type it in and the case is important. So W reg in uppercase and enter. So now I can watch what's going on with both of these ports at the same time. And I may even want to add another one. So we're not actually using port D, but I'll just throw it in there as an example. And if I now run my program in debug mode, we'll be able to see what happens in each of these. So you'll see when it breaks, these values will update to reflect the current settings. And anything that's changed will go red. Now, by default, you won't see all of these different values. You'll just see, I think it's a hexadecimal. Yeah, the, um, the, there'll be one called value. So by right clicking, we can select which of these that you want in here. So I've chosen to show all of them instead of value. So I can see it in whichever format I want and even the output character if we're dealing in text later on. So as I step through, um, I'm just going to let this run till the breakpoint. So I think F5 is the same as play. Yes. So you can see here that we're looking at port C and currently we have a one on position three. Now that position three, RC3, is actually the push button. So we'll be able to see that change in a moment. And the W reg is currently all um, ones and three zeros and that is from up here from when we set that so even though we're on this line it's still got the value from the previous at this stage if we step one line you will now see that w reg has a one in it so it's picked up this value here and we'll step again and see now has 1001. Now you might be thinking, hang on, we just wrote just one in there. So what's happened here is because in our Tris C, which I'm going to add in here, the first three bits are outputs and the rest are inputs, even though I've tried to drive these inputs to zero, I can't actually change the state of an input through a program only through an external source. So I've written to it, but it hasn't picked up on it. All right, so what I'm going to do is just step through these, uh, doing the step overs and just watch what happens. So W reg has changed value, which was based on our timer which when I mentioned before, other things can change it. Just be aware of that type of thing. So port C has now changed to being, uh, sorry, there's that one there, to being just one. Step again. And again. So port C is now two. Port C is three and so on. So we can see it moving up as we go. All right, so now I'm going to look at an external input. So we're using the button down here. So at the moment we know it has a one in it. So I will push that button down and hold it. A single press won't work in debug. You actually got to hold till the test, which is this line here. So I will step through and you'll see now port C has changed that 
that one is now a zero. That's because I had the button down. And when we do the test, because it's uh, not set, not a one, it didn't skip this line, and that will take us back up to there. Or if we keep going through again, we'll then repeat the whole process. Now there's quite a few other windows that can be useful for debugging. So we've had a quick look in there and there's other things, but they get a little bit complex for what we're trying to cover here. But memory can actually be very useful to see what's happening in memory. So I'll just open up each of these individually. So this is your program memory. So when we set up the program, we told it to start at memory location 00, zero and the very next line says go to start. So here we have at memory location 00, zero the hex value for an opcode, which says go to address number four. So address number four happens to be where this start was set up. So this is worked out by the compiler, not by us. And you'll see in there we have a call to a hexadecimal A. So that's this statement here. And then when we come back from the call, we've got a branch to loop. So it's this one here. So you can see exactly what's happening in memory by stepping through there. Okay, so that's quite useful, more for interest. But good to know it's there. All right, have a look at file registers. Now, in video part six, we're going to be looking at variables. So a little bit off, but I'll very, very briefly touch on them here. So these are called variables. So when we create something in a C block, what we're doing is allocating a name to a memory location. And by default, those memory locations start at zero and go up progressively. So if I was to go down to where we're actually using these numbers and put a breakpoint, so we'll, we'll put the breakpoint here and run. Okay, so you can see everything that has a different value to a moment ago is now in red, but I'm specifically interested in these first three. So we can step through. Uh, sorry, I actually broke in the wrong spot there. Okay, so now we're in the right spot. So I've just put decimal 10 into the W reg, and if I step forward, you can now see decimal 10, which is hex 08, A has gone into count three, which is location three. If we run down and pause here, so go run to cursor. So we're going to be putting decimal 199 into W and then we'll move it into counter one. And there it is there. So you can see your variables as to what's going on. And knowing physically where they are, so as I said earlier, they start at zero, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3 in the file register memory. We can actually watch them in here as well. So I can just go 0, x, 0, 0, 0, and that will now tell me that I have that 199 that I put in there. If I put in you have to double click this 0x001 so currently that one's blank and 0x002 so I've now got the ability to watch what's in each of my variables because when I hovered the variables it doesn't actually tell me the value so you've got to come in and put it in here so the next one we will look at SFRs, so before again we added them into the watch, but you can actually see all of them from this list. Configuration bits, not going to worry about. Um, yeah, so we won't touch on any of these. So that gives you a fairly good introduction to how to use debugging to work out what's happening in your program, particularly when it's not working, and to be able to then go through see the data in each individual location and determine where it's gone wrong. Yeah, right here. Do it. Do it. Do it.